Ladies and gentlemen, today is December 28th, 2016. The holidays have concluded. The new year draws closer. And my name is Ken Lafferty, and this is the Ken Show, episode 322. Was that what that was? Yes! 322. And today we're going to be talking about the pro art setup. And I can say that because I'm a pro, right? I never make mistakes. I'm a professional. And I'm going to tell you guys how you two can never make mistakes again because of the setup, right? The setup that I'm running. And we're going to be talking about this right over here. All the awesome tools that take away, that basically make it so I don't need any skill at all, right? Just let the computer do all the work for me. And I'm going to teach you how you too can be a pro artist. So, we're gonna be getting into that in just a moment, but before we jump into that, we need to take a stroll down a very special place, and that is, of course, Lovely Lane. So journey with me to tinyurl slash kankelfanner and click on this secret link called See All, and then be dazzled by the amazing art that you guys have been submitting. Oh man, oh, I scrolled too fast, go back up. Okay, there we go, slow, slow it down, slow the roll, there we go. Cool art that you guys have been submitting. Love the happy holidays. Love the sexy elves that are coming in. And as always, thank you guys so much. And if you have not yet, then go to the page, like it, and submit your own art, and you can be featured on next week's show. By the way, I hope you guys had some good holidays. Thank you once again for allowing me to take a week off. I feel so much better coming back to this, and I'm really excited to talk to you guys about this, uh, the pro art setup, because a lot of you guys have been asking what I like to use. So. Uh, before we actually get started, I do want to let you know that I'll be taking you on a little bit of a digital tour here, as well as discussing not only the tools of the trade, not only the tools of the trade, but there's actually a drawing in here too, a little sketch that I was drawing earlier of D.Va from Overwatch. And we'll be talking about a couple little things that I like to set up as far as like my actions, so over here. And if you don't know what an action is, don't worry, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you what it is. But cool little shortcuts and things that I've set up for myself that save me a lot of time while I'm working, okay? But first, let's go ahead and get into the desktop setup, okay? And, oh yeah, and also, for those of you who are interested in any of the things that I talk about today, I'll have links to most, if not all, of the things in the description. In fact, I might actually just be able to pull it up here. I think I have it. Oh yeah, here we go. Yeah, I got all the Amazon stuff pulled up here as well. So, let's go ahead and get into this. So the first thing let's talk about is the mouse pad. Okay, now you might think that this isn't important, right? But the mouse pad, the mouse pad is very important, right? Because this is what allows you to do, well, I don't really play games on here, but I just really like it. It's really nice. It's really portable. But the most important thing about it is that it has this really nice pad right here, right? And you can rest your wrist. Now, I'm sure many of you guys know about carpal tunnel syndrome and how it can wreak havoc on your, let me move this a little closer. It can wreak havoc on your wrist and that's why you guys should be taking breaks because I tell you guys all the time to take breaks and if you don't, then shame on you. Shame on you. In fact, I shame on myself because I haven't been taking proper breaks either. But this helps alleviate a little bit of your pain because you can rest your wrist right here and it's awesome, okay? Let's go ahead and move on to the mouse. Move on to the mouse, shall we? Okay, the mouse that I like to use, normally I really like Razer stuff, but after a while I kind of started moving towards Logitech because I found that they're the quality of their stuff, it lasts just a little bit longer, more bang for the buck. So this is the mouse pad that I'm, or sorry, just the mouse that I'm using. It's really, really nice. I really dig this thing a lot. It's got this cool little thing that kind of rests your thumb on so it doesn't drag on the mouse pad. It's got all these extra buttons that, you know, I never really use, like here and here, and the, uh, like there's like things here. I don't use any of that stuff. I really just like the way it comfortably fits my hand. So I highly recommend this mouse. It's really nice. Now let's talk about the keyboard. Now this keyboard is really cool because it's a very low profile keyboard. In fact, I can, might be able to just pull it up here and you guys can look at it in real time. Okay, so look at how thin this, this keyboard actually is. It's like a blade, it's like a samurai blade or the blade of Ronin from Titanfall 2, right? You just slash your enemies with it. It's awesome. But uh, the reason why I really like it is because it's completely silent. And for those of you who like to work in digital art, you're always constantly like pressing keys. And see, like even when I put it right up next to the microphone, you can barely hear the keystrokes. And it's a really nice low profile keyboard. And the most important part about it is that it's also backlit. So I really like to use this one. I've been using it for many, many years, many, many years. And I say it's classic because um, you can't really pick these up from Best Buy anymore. They have like some new fangled one that's not as good. Uh, I highly recommend this one. And that is, let me see, is that up here? This is the keyboard, uh, that's the monitor. There you go, this is the keyboard. So this one is called the K740 from Logitech. Really, really like this one. And again, all the links for this stuff are in the description. So just click that, or click that, clink it, clink it, buy it, bink it. And uh, it's an affiliate link too. So I will know 
I will know if you clicked on it or not, okay? I'll know if you're serious and you wanna become a pro artist, right? Not to mention I'll get like five cents, I think, for everybody who buys one. So that's pretty cool too. Now let's go ahead and move on to the Wacom tablet. The holy grail of your thingamajigger, the holy grail of your setup, okay? Now this is really important because this right here, this tablet is actually also a little bit old. This is an Intuos 4, I think they're up to Intuos 5, and uh, you can pick these up for around $200. Actually, well, these ones right here, you can get for $200. Uh, this one right here. See, this one's on Amazon, it's listed for $199. And I really like this, but you wanna know what the problem with this tablet is? The reason why I really believe it's, it's not really worth it for you guys to get it is because it has all these extra buttons over here and like this little display thing and this ring thing that's like touch sensitive. You can like stick your finger in there. It's like, it's not really useful. It's not, I don't use any of these things over here. This entire thing could have been completely removed from the tablet and I'd still be just fine. So for that reason, I'm going to recommend that you guys do not get this one unless you really like, unless you like using that extra stuff. But rather, I would recommend that you guys get something more like this. Now, um, yeah, because Wacom has these art tablets. This one's on Amazon. This is a small one, so this is a good thing if you're just barely getting into art. However, I would highly recommend um, getting a medium-sized one. Now, this one is from the actual Wacom website, uh, and this one is also around $200, okay? So keep that in mind. Around $200 for a medium-sized, about this size screen, you can see in relation to how big it is, you know? how much space you got to work with, right? I really like the medium ones. However, small one, there's nothing wrong with that. It's a good thing to get started. And I mean, at the price point of, what is this one? $60, you can't beat that. You can't beat that. All right, so moving back to the next part of the setup. Uh, let's go ahead and move up to our, oh, I totally forgot. Got to talk about the Blue Yeti mic because that that's actually really important for what we're going to talk about in just a moment. But first, let's talk about the monitor. So, and specifically this monitor over here. We're not worrying about this one. This one actually sucks. Uh, this is a Lenovo, right? Pay attention right here. If you're in Best Buy looking for a monitor and you see anything Lenovo, do not touch it. Do not buy a laptop from Lenovo. Do not buy a monitor from a Lenovo. Everything this company makes sucks. I only bought it just so I could have a second monitor and it was cheap, right? It was cheap so I could just stick it on the other end so I can move like a lot of my, because when I'm recording these shows, I move my XSplit and I move my other files and reference photos to the other screen. So. This is really nice to have. Um, and, I, and I don't wanna discount, right? I don't wanna discount the importance of having a second monitor because that really helps out a lot if you wanna do stuff like stream video or if you want to uh, be painting on one screen, right? You're painting over here and uh, you wanna have your reference images over here. It helps out so much, guys, it helps out so much. So, and that's my awesome little paintbrush right there. Okay, so this is a Samsung something S27 D5 blah, blah, blah. It's right here anyway. Uh, it's right here. Yeah, so I really like this one a lot. The only thing that I will say, and you guys have probably noticed this before, is if you put your your webcam on it and you move the, the desk at all, it totally like jiggles. So it's not a really like stable monitor, but it gets the job done. Um, I have been thinking about getting a tripod for this little thing, but I never seem to like, find the proper one. Uh, so for now, it just sits on top of this. And the only trade off is that it wiggles a little bit. So you'll just have to be okay with that. You'll have to be okay with that. All right, moving on to the camera. Let's talk about the Logitech C920. The C920, this is the thing that is on top of the computer. I place it up here and it jiggles around all over the place, right? And this thing is really, really nice because it, it has like some nice software. It's really easy to set up. It captures 1080p. Uh, but what it does not capture very well is your voice. It actually, the mic on this thing, it is so, so bad. Please do not get this camera and think that you can actually talk to it and have it not, like it, you'll see what I'm saying when you get it. Just get it and like try to sing a song to it and it literally like blows out your voice at certain like frequencies. It really doesn't like certain frequencies. It totally will like garble it and mess it up. Um, so for that reason, I would recommend I would recommend that you get yourselves a Blue Yeti. And that's this guy right over here. This is an awesome mic. It's so awesome because look at this. Do you notice? Did you, did you catch it? Look at this, it's USB. See this cord runs down here and then it goes underneath here and then, well, you can't see this, but it's actually plugging into my computer, which is in perspective underneath here, my tower, right? It's plugged in right there. 
Uh, and it's super easy. All you have to do is literally just open it, stick it in your computer, and it works perfectly. You don't need to really download any crazy software. It just makes your voice sound good. It's really simple to buy. I don't think I had the Amazon link for this one, but uh, this one is about, I think I got it for like 150, 150, and it's definitely well worth the investment. So definitely check that out. All right, did we miss anything? Let's see here. Uh, I think that about does it for the physical setup. Now, let's talk about software. Let's talk about software. For this, we'll go ahead and switch over to Deba. We'll switch over to Deba and let's talk about functions. Let's talk about tools of the trade once you have everything set up. And let's talk about how to make your art look good in a, an efficient manner, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna to talk to you guys about is functions. Functions are very important in Photoshop because they allow you to do things like this. Be like, oh, okay, well, I really like the way that this is going, but I'd really like to be able to flip my image and take a look at it, right? We call this flipping, mirror imaging. So we can see any issues possibly with our face, right? But see what the problem is, is I had to go all the way up here. I have to go to image, image rotation, and flip canvas horizontal. And then when I'm done, I have to go back up to your image, image rotation, flip canvas horizontal again. You know what would be really handy? Is if we could just press one button and have it flip back and forth, right? This doesn't come stock with Photoshop. So let's go ahead and I will show you how to do that. Okay, so the way you're gonna do that is you're gonna go up to window and you're gonna make sure that you have your actions selected, right? That's gonna bring you over here, okay? So now what you're gonna do is bring your attention right over here to this thing that looks like a new layer button, right down here. Click on that. And then what you're gonna do is it's gonna prompt you to say, okay, create a new action. And in fact, here, let me go ahead and delete this so that way we can do it over again. Okay, so I'm gonna delete this action. Notice how it says flip, I'm deleting that thing. Okay, so we're creating a new one. I'm gonna name it flip, okay? And then let's go ahead and set the function key to F2. Uh, color doesn't really matter, but we're gonna go ahead and hit record, okay? Recording, so see, now it has that little thing lit up. Now we're gonna go to image, image rotation, and flip canvas horizontal. Boom, then when you're done with that, go ahead and hit the stop button. And look at that. Now what you've done is you've effectively bound your F2 to flip your document. And you can do that with all kinds of things. Let's go ahead and move on to a couple other things that I like to do. Another uh, action that I have set up is expand, is expand my selection. Now why could this be, or why would this be uh, useful to us? Well, there's a couple things why this would be useful to us. One is because, totally flipped to the other screen for a second there, I don't know why it did that. But let's go ahead and select everything around our character with our magic wand. And then what we wanna do is we want to mask our character. We wanna be able to expand this selection into the lines. Now, do you notice how I'm doing this? Oh, isn't that awesome? I'm doing that by hitting F3, which I have set to expand. And what that's doing is it is, I basically hit the record button, then I went to select, modify, and expand. And I expanded it by two pixels, right? So now what that did, similar to how we set up, I wonder if I should do this in real time again. And whatever, we'll do it in real time again. So I'm, I've gone ahead and I've deleted that, okay? I've deleted that action. Let's set it up again. So I wanna make sure that you guys get this stuff right, okay? We're gonna get it all right today. Okay, so we're gonna create a new thing, right? New layer, let's call this expand. Expand, isn't that nice? Function key, let's put this one on F3. Record, okay? Now make sure that you have already selected, right? Because we don't want it to record us using the magic wand. Make sure you've already used the magic wand. And all you wanna do is you wanna go to select, modify, and expand, okay? And I like to expand by two pixels. Sometimes I do it by three. It just depends on what you want the action to be. You can even set the uh, expand action to one pixel, and then each time you press it, it just goes one pixel further. But for this one, we're gonna do two pixels, because I feel like that's the happy medium, okay? We just expanded it by two pixels, we hit the stop button, okay? Now when we hit F3, it does that action over and over again, and we can pull our, our selection in. And why is this important? Because we are going to move on to the next thing, which is called shift control I, which basically implodes or inverts your selection, shift control I. It won't really look any different here, but what you've just done is you have now selected Diva herself. And now look at that, you can now simply mask it. Instead of going in there and manually masking, okay? I've told you guys, don't do this. Don't do this. 
Okay, look at that. So now you have manually masked. Very, very easy. Easy, easy stuff. Okay, so we'll get more into this in just a moment. I'm gonna select a nice color that I like. Ah, yes, I like that one. That one looks good. That's a good start. Okay, so, um, oh, and I totally snuck one by you. I snuck one by you because after I selected that, did you notice how I instantly filled it? I instantly filled it and that is another action. I have it set to F4. Now, this one, since I've already shown it to you twice, basically the way that you would have done it is you would have your selection like this. You would hit record, then you go to edit and fill. And then you fill with foreground color. Hit okay, and that's when you'd hit the stop button. Now, what you can do is you can select any color and when you hit F4, see it automatically just fills it. So little things like this are what save me a lot of time whenever I'm masking, whenever I am like creating my character mask. Cause you could, could you imagine if I had to go through this and I'd be like, okay, it's time to mask this character. And then I bust out my ink brush and I start doing this and I start like doing this. And it, this wouldn't take actually too much more time, but then you gotta go back in there and you're like, oh, this actually went out a little bit. And then you gotta go like, go back in there and kind of trim it up. It's like, don't, don't deal with that stuff. Don't deal with that crap. Use the magic wand, use what it was intended for, expand it inwards, implode it and fill it, okay? And with that, let's move on to the next thing. Hope you guys are learning some good stuff from this. Hope you guys are learning some good stuff from this. I know that I certainly have over the years, and so I'm trying to just pass that down. I'm gonna pass that down to you guys. Okay, next. Uh, let's talk about the brackets. Okay, oh, I love the brackets. I love the brackets. Now, what are the brackets? They're these keys on your keyboard. These little guys are about to become your next best friends, okay? That is this guy and this guy. These two keys are really awesome because what they do, by default, you don't have to set this up as a action, but what it does is it adjusts, can you see that? It's adjusting my brush on the fly. So I don't have to right click and move this thing around and then click, click this and then kind of like do that. You can just adjust this as you go. And I use this all the time when I'm sketching my hand is always on the left and right angle brackets, right down here. This is where my, my hand is, okay? One hand's there, the other one's right here. Oh, look at this, awesome. Yeah, look at that. It's like, oh, th that's totally like virtual reality right there. That's literally how I draw all the time, okay? Uh, whenever I'm in my sketching stages, like when I was drawing this diva, that's exactly what I was doing. I had my hand set up like that and I'm always adjusting the size of the brush on the fly, on the fly, okay? Speaking of brushes, let's talk about brushes. What kind of brushes do I use? Well, they're ones that you can get for free. You can get all these brushes for free. Why is this here? This is really weird. Is that like a, I don't remember seeing this. What does this do? I can like select something and then automatically like grab it? That's really weird. Okay, well, I'll deal with that later. But anyway, all these brushes are free for download. Just go ahead and, again, the link is in the description. Actually, wait, I can actually put this one up here. So click right here if you wanna download all these brushes for free. It's really cool. And let me show you some of my personal favorites. Now, the one that I use about 99.9% .9 of the time is this chalk brush. Now, why do I like it so much? Because it takes you away from the usual, like this is the, the usual one that you get. It's like the hard brush. It's kind of cool, but it, it lacks texture. It lacks character to it, right? But with this chalk brush, see how you can make it like large and like kind of like, it just has so much more character and flow to it and texture. And it's just really nice. I think it really simulates, I don't know, it just simulates a little bit more of like a pencil look to it. And I like the way it makes all of my lines look. So give that a go if you like it. I really like this Reptar brush as well because it's just texture. It just has really nice texture to it. And it's uh, more of like an inking brush. Uh, another thing that I really like is, uh, oh, I like these skin ones, like all this stuff in here, just like for like creating, I use this for like pores as well as like stars, right? You can create something like this, I do this all the time, or I'll like create like a sky like this, and then I will do this, and I'll like put stars in the background, like this type of thing. Uh, is that it? Ah, there we go. I think this one's a little bit better. Yeah, but I'll do stuff like that all the time. Like just creating texture in your piece. Um, I try not to go too overboard with texture brushes, um, even though I do really like them. Um, those are more just like final little effects. But again, the real one that I want you guys to watch out for is this one right here, the chalk brush. 
Chalk brush will change your life. It will save your life, save your peace, and make you happy. All right, let's talk about the next one. Okay, the next thing that I want to talk to you guys about, the next shortcut that I want to talk to you guys about is Control J. Control J. Now what this does is it instantly duplicates your layer. Do you see what we just did there? Instantly duplicates your layer. Now the reason why I like doing this is because it allows you to make minor adjustments to your piece, right? Let's say we wanted to change this eye on Diva, right? Be like, this eye is too cute. Let's make it a little bit more scary looking, right? We need to make it look more like, like the real monster that Diva is, right? Because we all know that she and May are the biggest crazy uh, lizard people of the Overwatch game, right? They're evil lizard people in disguise. And this is proven by their their dirty tactics and the fact that everyone likes to play them because they're just OP right now. So anyway, okay, so you do something like that. But then at the end, you're like, oh, I don't know if I really want D.Va to be a lizard person. I don't know if I really like this. I don't know if I want to reveal her true, her true identity to the world. So because you hit Control J, you can just go back in time to back to your cute cute eyes, right? <laughs> and that's the importance of control J. That was what we were trying to get after, okay? Just duplicating, I do that all the time. As I'm drawing, as I'm moving up, I control J, make some adjustments, control J, make some adjustments, right? And then I can just go back and forth. Think of it as like save states, save states for your drawing. All right, next one is control U. Control U is awesome because it is control, controls the hue. I always think about it, just control U, control hue. And that allows you to go through and just kind of like modify your colors on the fly. I like stuff like that because it just makes it so much easier. So much easier, okay? Now, uh, the next one that we need to learn is Shift Control N, which allows you to make a new layer very quickly. So you don't have to, well, I mean, it's pretty quick. You can click down here, but I like to hit Shift Control N. Then that allows you to go in here and add some new colors. All right, add some new colors on there. That looks nice, that looks great, great, fine, dandy. New layer, shift control N. Ooh, I really like this green right there. It looks awesome. Let's throw some green in there. Uh, let's go ahead and shift control N again. Like, see how cool that is? You just go and go and go. Go and go and go. Get that brown hair in there. Let's actually make it a little bit lighter so it shows up. Oh, whoops. Let's make this highlight a little bit brighter so it shows up. There we go. It's looking good. Let's also color the eyes that color. That looks good. Let's shift control N again. Color the eyes. And in the meantime, I'm thinking about what I'm gonna tell you about next. I think we're about done. Oh yeah, I need to tell you guys about Alt, the power of the Alt key. Alt is really cool because when you just hit Alt, it automatically grabs, it turns your brush to your eyedropper. Now I'm always using this Whenever, let's go ahead and move over to the skin. Let's do a little bit of blending. So I really like this whenever I'm working with skin because it allows you to blend stuff really easily. Let's go and make these a little bit darker. So let's say you wanna put a little bit of blush on the skin, right? But that's a little bit too much, a little bit too much. Well, you can just hit Alt, grab that color in the middle, grab that color, then kind of blend that in, blend that in. Whoops, a little too much there, right? Grab that, blend it in. Awesome, isn't that? Okay, let's go ahead and put some shading on this skin. There we go, and look, Alt grab. Grab it with the Alt key, and look at that. I'm blending away, blending away without having to select my colors over and over and over again. I love this, I love this stuff. Okay, let's go ahead and grab this white because her shoulder pads here are white. Grab this green. All right, and you can see before your very eyes, our diva is coming together. Our diva is coming together. There you go, put some shines on there. There you go. Isn't that awesome? See, and look at that. I'm just, this is the point where I move my hand over from here, right? I move it over to the Alt key. It's touching this key right there, right? And it's specifically my Thumb. Yeah, I've got my thumb on that. And then my other hand is there. So this is position one, this is position two, okay? Those are the important things you need to know as a pro artist, okay? So now I'm in position two. And then that allows you to 
blend, and be awesome. And I think that is gonna be it, guys. I think that's it. Let me just review my, oh yeah, we gotta talk about Photoshop. <laughs> the most important thing. Oh, and image res, okay. So let's talk about Photoshop. Okay, guys, so the important part. Now we're getting into the software that you gotta buy, okay? Now I know some of you wince in pain when you think about this, but don't worry because Photoshop, Adobe has been nice. They've, been, they've decided to grace us, right? Not just the students, but the people of the world with an affordable plan to own Photoshop, right? And there's all kinds of ways that you can affordably own Photoshop, but I'm gonna tell you about the legal one, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to adobe.com <laughs> And look at this, look, this is specifically what I want you to look at right down here, $9.99 a month, okay? This is $10 a month to get Photoshop and you can experiment with it and it's basically everything that you need, right? You don't need, you don't really need anything else. This is all that you're working with. Photoshop is awesome, definitely go get it, $9.99 a month. You can't beat that, okay? You can beg your parents for $9 a month, okay? In fact, I have before. So anyway. <laughs> So let's go ahead and move on to Lazy Nizumi. Uh, well, I don't know if I really need to talk about Lazy Nizumi that much, but yeah, whatever. I'll talk about it just for the heck of it. Okay, so Lazy Nizumi is this tool right here, which allows you to, by hitting this power button. Now, Lazy Nizumi is cool because it, uh, it's actually for free. You can try it for free, so I would highly recommend you guys go check it out. Uh, the link for this one will also be in the description, but it allows you to make smooth lines. Now this is something that, oh, demonstrated by this really handy GIF over here. Uh, but do you ever, like, are you ever working in Photoshop and you wish that you could be like making smooth lines, particularly if you're doing like cartoony stuff or like more like vector art type things? Um, like Photoshop just, it should have had this tool in it on like just by automatic, but it doesn't, man. And you gotta go buy it, which is unfortunate, but these people are geniuses for making it, so you should definitely go support them. Um, but it allows you to make nice smooth lines as I will demonstrate here. So take a look here. Uh, let's go ahead and pick a Reptar brush. Okay, so let me go ahead and turn this off. Let me turn this off and I'll demonstrate what this looks like without the Lazy Nizumi and then with it. Okay, so without Lazy Nizumi, actually this will probably show up better. Okay, so let's try to draw like a curvy circle thing. Okay, so see how I do this? And like, see how these lines look in here? Do you see all these little wiggles that are happening in this area? Let's turn on the Lazy Nizumi. And what this does is it kind of like allows you to sort of like pull a string. Like pay attention to where my cursor is. It looks like it's laggy, but it's actually more so like you're pulling a string and it allows you to make really smooth lines. Even if I try to like kind of really mess this up, it, it tends to just really curve your lines really nicely. And I like that a lot. So check that out if that sounds like something that you would like. Okay, now the last thing that we will talk about is the image res, the image res, because a lot of people talk to me or they ask me about what is the size of your image that you're working with? And I'll be happy to tell you, right? This is the biggest secret of all, so prepare yourselves. Prepare yourselves. We're gonna go to image, we're gonna go to image size and you'll be dazzled, be amazed. 16 by nine, 300 DPI. Now, why do I use those numbers? Well, because 16 by nine is a, a desktop resolution. So whenever you're done with your picture, hey, it makes a really handy desktop for those of you know your fans or people that want to use it as your desktop, or you can use it for yourself. It's just a really nice, uh, it's just a really nice dimension that is very versatile. Um, and 300 DPI because it is a very good print resolution. So if you're going to go make posters, you're going to go to a con. It's really nice to have a 300 DPI file be able to send over so they can make your poster. All right, so I think that is gonna be it, ladies and gentlemen, I think that is it. But first I wanna make a couple more changes to this. I wanna make this glow a little bit. Let's go ahead and kind of make these a little bit more pinkish. And that is looking good. That is looking quite good. Love it. All right, guys. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and end today's show. I hope you guys got some good value out of this. If you guys are interested, I will be not only putting my brushes on the Patreon for you to download for free, right? You don't need to contribute anything. You don't need to, you don't need to support me with anything. You guys already spent a lot of money buying gifts for everybody else, and you got a lot of gifts too, so uh, you don't need to worry about that. Go download the brushes for free. However, if you do wanna download this PSD as well as all the other PSDs from the past, then you can go up here and support and join the Patreon, and that'll be freaking awesome. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I'm super excited for the new year. Got some really cool surprises coming for you. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. Hope you learned something. I think I already said all that stuff. But anyway, yeah, 
Go spend all that money. I know you got all those Best Buy gift cards. You got those freaking uh, Amazon gift cards. Get on there, buy this stuff, and become pro. Become pro like yours truly, right? Become pro and use all this stuff. Use the, use the virtual reality, right? Now you know how to place your hands. You know what keyboard to get. You know what mouse to get. You know everything to get. Oh yeah, and let's not forget about the most important part, right over here. You gotta have your inspiration and you gotta have your journal, right? I always tell you guys, get your journals, make, your, make those checklists, do some good reading, get inspired, right? Ma take notes, make notes, right? That's how I kinda stay a little bit more organized with this stuff. So, that is gonna be it, guys. You guys take care of yourselves, have a great new year. I will see you guys in 2017, and until then, you guys stay awesome.